Hi, uh, this is uh, lecture number 41 uh, on uh, drainage system components. So, uh, so, in the last class we have initiated the uh, I mean drainage systems and uh, their components. So, we are going to uh, stretch a little bit forward on the same issue. So, here the uh, field drainage uh, system if you recollect from the previous lecture. So, it has um, a collector drain or you can say this is the field drain. Okay. So, the from, from field drains, so these are the laterals in the field which collects the uh, I mean the excess water on the surface to the collector drain right and from the collector drain. So, all uh, the collector drains lead to the water towards or uh, inside the uh, main drain. So, okay, this is the main drain and the main drain uh, is uh, going to you know uh, convey the water towards the outlet here right. So, the uh, from outlet it goes to the uh, nearest stream or any water course. So, here outlet uh, can be like a gravity outlet and pump outlet. So, if the the level the base of uh, the you know main drain is higher than the the base of the water course so then the gravity outlet will work. Uh, if suppose the base of the uh, main drain right say lower than the the water level of the water course. So, then there is a chance of water which is coming from water course to the main drain and the drain may not be working. So, in that case we we have uh, uh, in the pump outlet. So, we are going to close this right and then uh, we have to close this outlet and pump this water to the, the uh, water course. Okay. So, then uh, so as I mentioned uh, we have a surface drainage system and subsurface drainage system. So, the main uh, goal of surface drainage system is to remove excess water from the land surface okay, by using shallow drains. Okay. So, here if you see in the picture, so for example, so this is uh, uh, initial water table right, this is initial water table of drainage system and you would like to you know uh, pull this water table below the uh, root zone because this is the root zone. So, if in order to do that, so we are going to construct uh, the shallow drain field drains, these are the field drains okay, field drains and cross sectional view. So, then what happens? So, uh, since initially the water level probably could be here because of the water table. So, then when, when the field channels uh, you know uh, withdraws water towards the main channel. So, then the water table is going to uh, down to the I mean the next water table will be going here. Okay. So, so that it is just below the I and mean the water table is below the crop root zone and this is what we are expecting from the surface drainage. A very subsurface drainage. So, this is basically to control uh, water from the um, to control the water table in the root zone and also to to control the salt content. Okay. So, mostly we use the deep water uh, open ditches or pipe drains are going to be used. Here the example of pipe drains. So, here is the initial water table and when you use uh, uh, pipes to drain the water out right. So, then this wa water table is going to fall here. Okay. So, so, since so here uh, Either it can be like a deep ditches, right? Either it can be deep ditches or like tiles. Okay. And then uh, here, uh, uh, surface drainage system. So if you focus on this surface drainage system, so the basically it has two components, right? So one is uh, open drains to collect ponding water and divert. Uh, it to collected drains. So, that is we have seen. So, first it collects the water from the, the field drains okay. so, or uh, open drains and then uh, uh, and then uh, convey this uh, to the main drain. And other thing other important thing is the land forming. So, this is very important in case of su surface drainage system. 
So, this will enhance the flow of water towards the field drains. So, what happens if, if we have the terrain or the uh, land surface is uh, not properly you know leveled, then land forming is very important uh, in order to convey the water easily to the uh, uh, shallow uh, I mean channels or open ditches. Okay. So, then uh, what are the land formings? So, we are going to see the, the types of land forming we follow uh, in a sub surface in surface uh, surface drainage system. So, one uh, such land forming practice is the bedding. So, the bedding suppose you have a uh, land surface like this in bedding what happens? So, you are going to uh, bed the soil right uh, from the channel to the other channel. Okay. So, in between so, just a kind of uh, a shallow heap right like uh, this is another heap. Okay. So, that what happens if there is a water which is which is falling on the surface. So, that will be you know run off to the uh, you know this shallow channel like open ditch and finally, it goes to the uh, collector ditch. Okay. So, similarly here. So, water is going to run off to the nearest field drain and then uh, run off to the uh, collector drain. Okay. So, this will help basically. So, the bedding will is kind of a plowing land to form a series of low beds uh, separated by parallel uh, you know the field drains right. and then most practicable on flat slopes uh, less than 1.5 percent because the flat slopes what happens if you if you have uh, flat slopes the, the water which is uh, falling I mean, the rainfall which is falling on the surface will be inundated uh, like it will be causing ponding. So, that is why you need to make a bedding so that the water can easily uh, run off from top to to the nearest field drain. Okay. And this is the oldest practice used for grasslands mostly and other practice is called uh, land grading. So, in the land grading, so what happens if you have undulated terrain or undulated surface. So, suppose this is the initial the, the land condition right. If this is the initial land condition and you want to uh, make a grade right the slope like this right. This is the design slope. So, you are going to make a slope like this. So, for that uh, the method is called cut and fill. So, wherever there is a you know uh, a heap or extra soil that will be cut and wherever it is required for example, here you need to uh, fill it. Okay. So, cut this portion and fill it here. So, this is called cut and fill method uh, and after that uh, this will be you know, uh, you know leveled and finally, the land grading is uh, required land grading is taking place. So, basically the cutting and filling then smoothing of the land to a predetermined slope. Okay. So, you, uh, knowing the, the slope you are going to see how much uh, soil needs to be cut here right and how much uh, needs to be cut here so that this will be filled. Okay. And it reduces the number of field drains uh, most of the land is available for farming. So, in this case in the bedding case what happens because of the because of the uh, the field channels closer or number of field channels uh, number of field channels the farming operations will be a little difficult. So, here uh, the field channels are fewer I uh, means less compared to the bedding case and you have uh, more favorable uh, forming operations and economical than the bedding because uh, uh, because the number of you know field drains are less in this case and then next uh, third operation could be the land planing so this is the land planing so this is basically if you have a flat surface or i mean well graded surface but still there are some patches in between so suppose you have a patch here and the patch here uh, maybe hill here. So, in that case what happens? So, we use a, a, a like a land plane or land leveler will be used to fill up uh, you know. So, these patches by using nearest uh, you know hills or maybe some uh, soil from uh, other you know uh, other places. So, this, this can be leveled then. So, this is called a smoothing or land surface by eliminating minor depressions or irregularities on the 
surface and topography of the land surface is not changed because uh, for do I mean in, in doing that you know, we are not going to change any uh, land slope only thing we need to correct the land slope by adjusting the uh, I mean cuts and fields okay, or depressions. This is a special equipment uh, like a land plane or leveler will be used and the smoothing operation may be uh, ordinarily be directed uh, in the field without detailed uh, survey or plans although grid survey may be needed for some critical parts of the field. Suppose if you have uh, the field with you know lot of patches or uh, maybe you know 20 at least 10 to 15 percentage of land is uh, uh, under you know depressions. So, then probably you may have to you know plan for a uh, little I mean land grading. So, for in that case in that case you know the grid wise survey may be required. Okay, so, that is all uh, for the surface, uh, surface drainage system right. So, those things are very much required uh, like uh, when it's bedding you know uh, and then grading and uh, planing. So, uh, these things are required in order to convey the uh, water I mean water which is falling on the surface uh, to the nearest field channels right. So, this is conveying in order to ease the conveyance. So, then uh, so, after that so what are the types of uh, these field channels. So, types of field channels or layouts if you see the layouts. So, the first could be the random uh, field drainage system. So, in this random field the, the name indicates the random field drainage system. So, if you have uh, like the patches like for example, here this is a depression and here there is a depression there is a de depression a depression. So, where the water which is falling on the surface is causing inundation and if you if you have too much water then this and this is going to you know mm, mm, you know merge and that can increase the you know inundation area. So, for that what happens the the random field drainage system connects the patches like from here to here and from here to the main uh, field channel right. And uh, uh, similarly, this depression, this depression, and finally connected to the the, the collector drain. Okay, these, these are the field channels or field drains, or uh, field ditches, and the laterals or collector drains. And finally, this is the main drain. Okay. So uh, basically, the application when there is number of large and uh, shallow depressions in the field. That's what I explained and field ditches uh, connect the major depressions. So, these are the field ditches right. So, they connect the major depressions and finally, leads to the, the collector drain ok. Shallow enough to permit frequent uh, crossing by formationary. So, uh, this is the problem uh, because these are the shallow. So, formationary, formationary equipments can cross right uh, can cross and uh, do the operations easy. So, and uh, soil uh, from ditches can be used to fill minor depressions in the field. So, from the ditches, so when you make the ditches, so sometimes what happened in order to construct these ditches and you have to remove some water, I mean soil, that soil can be filled to the you know some, some of the depressions. Okay, so, the next uh, one is the random uh, field drainage and the other one is a parallel field drainage system. In fact, the name indicates the, the parallel uh, field drainage system. So, here the field ditches are parallel to each other right. So, this is uh, let us say 1, uh, 2 and 3. So, these these are the ditches the field ditches they they parallel to each other uh, and the distance between the uh, ditches may vary ok. It may not be constant, but only thing is they need to be parallel ok. They need to be parallel. And this is suitable for flatter and poorly drained soils that have numerous shallow depressions. If you have large number of shallow depressions right. So, and uh, these parallel drainage system would help in uh, you know removing the excess water from the surface and instead uh, sorry installed uh, across the uh, slope to break the uh, field into shorter units or length and make it less susceptible to erosion. So, in this case the erosion sometimes would be a problem. So, uh, this field uh, ditches needs to be uh, constructed across the slope. So, that uh, the uh, the erosion can be reduced or minimized 
uh, the field should be formed uh, in the direction of the greatest slope. This is another recommendation. So, look for the greatest, uh, greatest uh, slope and you are going to uh, form the land uh, and towards the greatest slope and ditches uh, must be parallel, but need not be equal distance as I already mentioned and most effective method for surface uh, drainage system. So, this is, uh, this is the most effective compared to your random uh, layout. So, the parallel uh, field drainage system is more effective uh, drainage system. And the other one is now the subsurface uh, drainage system. So, in subsurface drainage systems as the name indicates, so we are going to collect the water uh, both from the surface as well as the root zone. So, since we are interested in the uh, irrigation uh, I mean growing crops, so our interest is to remove water, excess water from the root zone. At the same time, the subsurface drainage will also remove the uh, salts. So, uh, and then uh, uh, what, what are the advantages of uh, you know subsurface drainage system. So, the advantage or first thing is aeration of the soil right. So, once you are removing once we are removing you know excess water from the uh, root zone right from the root zone. So, uh, that means this is all uh, become unsaturated uh, flow condition. So, that means, so uh, there is a uh, there, there is a uh, I mean soil pores. Uh, which have filled with air. So, that air is very much important for uh, roots to be respirated. So, then uh, and then increase length of growing season since this uh, drainage system will help in removing the excess water in the uh, monsoon season or in the beginning of the monsoon as we expect a lot of water in the beginning. So, uh, our sowing uh, date would be faster like early sowing can be uh, possible. So, that way uh, the length of growing season would not help in uh, 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 would not affect in uh, uh, you know uh, the crop growth ok. And then improvement of soil water uh, condition. So, since uh, this is under aerated condition right it is not inundated. So, the farming operations can be easily done on this uh, uh, on this lands and then remove toxic substances such as salts. So, that is one of the uh, you know objectives of uh, uh, I mean subsurface drainage system. So, and the greater storage capacity of the soil, so of, of the water, I mean capacity for water, right. So, uh, since the water is being removed and the unsaturated condition is achieved, so the excess water, so the, the additional water which is falling can be stored inside the root zones. So, that will improve the uh, storage capacity of the uh, soil, ok. So, the next is. Uh, uh, so, how the selection between uh, you know open drain and uh, pipe drain system. So, the open drains open drains what happen it can uh, receive overland flow and also serve as a surface drainage. So, that is what the open, open uh, drain is uh, basically to remove excess water which is uh, ponding on the surface and some of the land uh, is lost in construction of drains. So, compared to subsurface drainage in um, except in case of uh, uh, you know deep ditches. So, uh, the surface drainage system is going to lose uh, soil or, uh, or extra you know uh, because for making ditches you need to remove the soil and this much area is not used for any cultivation ok. So, you are losing farming land and interferes with the irrigation system farming operation. Once there is a gap right or, or depression due to so, farming operations cannot be you know it is it's, uh, difficult to operate the forming equipments on the uh, field. So, and then the pipe drains the most widely used sub, uh, subsurface drain is method worldwide. So, that is why in, in case of uh, pipe drains what happens you may not be seeing the pipes you know over the surface it is underneath the surface and uh, uh, so that will really help in, uh, in you know uh, forming operations to be easy. And then, and and also, you are not going to lose any farming, uh, you know, farm land. Okay, so there are two options in collectors. So open drains. So it could be like a singular pipe drainage system, or the pipe drains, the composite uh, pipe drainage system. Okay, these two uh, options of collectors can be possible in case of pipe drainage system. We are going to see uh, what are the singular and what are the composite. Uh, pipe drainage system. Okay, if you see this, 
uh, let us see. So, here the singular systems are uh, such that uh, each field pipe drain dissolves into an open collector drain. If you see in this picture, so the, the pipe drains are going uh, into the soil, right. But so all these pipe drains, here also there is a pipe drain and here also there is a pipe drain. So, all these pipe drains are going to yield water or like this for example, here. So, water is really coming into the open ditch here. So, that means the pipe drain or the tiles are open to the, the tiles are open to the, uh, open to the uh, you know uh, main drain or field ditches okay, in this case or collectors right. Whereas, composite drainage system what happens? So, here these are the pipes sim, uh, just like this right. So, these pipes are uh, installed underneath the uh, underneath the uh, ground surface right and there is a collector the collector which collects which collects the water from uh, you know drainage from all the fields all the uh, I mean the uh, field drains field drains here is the tiles from all the tiles and then uh, removes the water. So, like here you are using a T joint right the T joint. So, this is kind of a composite. So, our composite in the sense collecting drainage from all the all the uh, uh, you know the tiles uh, through a single uh, pipeline. Okay. So, here the field pipes drain discharge into a pipe collector which in turn discharges into a open drain said so from from here this will be an open drain. Okay. So, all pipe drains and collector drains are buried pipes in this case. Okay. So, here this is open and this is the, these are the buried. And then uh, in subsurface uh, drainage system also if you see the layouts similar to in case of surface system you have two kinds of layouts one is uh, uh, random field drainage uh, and the other one is uh, parallel you know field drainage system. So, similarly here the random system. So, random system here the pattern is suitable for undulating or uh, rolling land contains isolated wet areas similar to your surface system in, in case of subsurface system also you are going to connect the, uh, the depressions randomly uh, develop depressions here. For example, here here is a wet spot right here is a wet, wet spot and here is a wet spot wet spot wet spots. So, right. So, all these wet, so wet spots are collected with field uh, like tile drains right tile drains. So, the tile drains are these, these are uh, uh, you know underneath the ground okay. uh, that is why this is subsurface drainage system and then you are going to collect water from I mean drainage from uh, different patches right and then finally, to the to the uh, main channel or uh, water course and this is the main channel right this is the main drainage system drainage pipe or tile pipe. Okay. And within the suppose if the area of depression is larger if area of depression is you know large uh, then you can also plan for uh, like uh, we are going to uh, see the other type of uh, you know drainage systems uh, for example, parallel drainage system okay, and then herring bone systems. So, those can be uh, you know planned for each depressions here. So, so within the random system we are going to uh, see the other drainage uh, layouts. Okay. So, we are going to see those. So, here uh, the main drainage the, the main drain is usually placed in the uh, swales uh, rather than a deep cuts through the ridges right. And then uh, the, the laterals in the pattern are arranged according to the size of the isolated wet areas. Suppose, if you have the isolated wet areas uh, uh, or smaller right small areas as I mentioned. So, uh, or bigger areas you can go for other uh, drainage layouts. Okay. So, let us see the other uh, layouts which can be uh, you know adopted in a random uh, systems. So, uh, the other one is uh, similar to your uh, surface system surface uh, uh, drainage system there is a parallel grid system. So, here uh, in the parallel also uh, we are talking about the tiles installed uh, within the ground right in but, but they are parallel to each other. Okay. 
the field drains uh, joins the collector at a uh, right angle if you see this. So, this is the collector right and, and these are the, the field drains these are the field drains. Okay. So, um, and then the laterals in the pattern may be spaced at interval consistent with the side conditions. So, here uh, I mean these laterals sometimes what happen. So, the spacing could be uh, I mean the same same spacing sometimes you may have to change the uh, spacing you know based on the uh, terrain of the soil. Okay. So, this pattern is used on flat uh, regularly regularly sloped fields and uniform soils right and, uh, and variations this pattern are often combined with others. Okay. So, this can be combined. So, this could be sometimes what happen one sided and multi sided also. So, suppose you have the collector here right. So, sometimes what happens? So, these, these parallel drains could uh, result, you know, or could drain to the collector in one side, right? This is one side. So, sometimes what happens? So, you may you may also see in the in the double sided, okay. So, single single side uh, uh, drainage system and double side also, right? So, this kind of system can be uh, I mean can be observed in parallel grid system. So, then the third one is uh, herring bone system, right. So, herring bone system, so in parallel system what happened the field ditches are uh, parallel to uh, sorry uh, perpendicular to the collector, but here the field uh, or you can say the lateral or field ditches or, or it can be tiles field uh, the tile drains, right. So, they have a sharp angle these are the sharp angles, right, sharp angles with the uh, collector. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the difference. The kind of herring bone, herring bone in the sense, right? It's a, a bone kind of thing. So uh, field drain joins the collector sharp angles, usually from both sides, right? From this side and uh, this side. And the main is uh, uh, located on the major slope of the land, right? That is the main. And the laterals are uh, angled upstream on a grade. Okay. So, these are the upstream this is the uh, the main drain is uh, located in the uh, in the major slope right. So, suppose the the field is uh, sloping this side right sloping this side. So, this the main drain goes into the, this slope whereas, uh, the other things right the cross slopes. Okay. So, th those are in the uh, across the slope. Okay. Uh, it can provide extra drainage needed for the less permeable soils. So, if you are using you know uh, sandy loam soils or the clay soils, so this can provide extra drainage needed for the uh, less permeable soils. So, and disadvantage is kind of it cause double drainage right uh, and the cost more than the uh, more than other patterns like uh, you have random and uh, parallel. Uh, because it contains more junctions. So, because so here you have a junction, here a junction right. So, many junctions are involved in case of herring bone the cost is more right compared to other uh, drainage layouts and it causes the double drainage, it causes the double drainage uh, sometimes. So, that is why herring bone uh, is kind of you know uh, when, uh, when you design it it should be designed properly. So, what happens double drainage in the sense. So, here uh, there is a drainage which is also taking place in maintenance and, and also you have the cross slopes right that can uh, lead to the extra drainage here. Okay. So, then uh, so sometimes you may also see the combined drainage system where this is basically uh, depends on the different you know cropping patterns. So, if you are looking for a different cropping pattern for example, paddy right paddy is a uh, it, it requires a lot of water right standing water compared to in the same season if you are if you are uh, looking for maize right uh, cotton right all those things. So, those things those crops does not require much water right. So, in that case in order to balance or in order to uh, I mean uh, give water properly to the particular crop you may have to use combined drainage system. So, in case of combined drainage system uh, what happened the surface and subsurface drainage systems may be needed right when cropping patterns include rice rotation with dry food crops such as maize or cotton. So, these are dry, um, may, uh, dry food crops is not uh, because 
uh, I mean it requires you know aeration compared to uh, paddy and subsurface drainage is needed for salinity control for maize or cotton. Sometimes uh, if you are growing maize and cotton in case of you know uh, saline soils, so you may have to uh, use leachate water to drain out right you, you need to so there subsurface drainage is required and surface drainage is needed for paddy to remove ponding water. So, sometimes if the excess water is too much on uh, on the paddy like surface generally for paddy it is like 5 centimeter standing water of is practiced or 5 to 10 centimeter. So, if, if, if the if the water is more than uh, the depth you need to remove it using surface drainage system. Right. So, so these things can be uh, if you are having this kind of situation you may have to use combined uh, drainage system that means both surface and subsurface drainage system. Okay. So, uh, the areas with uh, uh, occasional high intensity rainfall for example, 50 mm per day I mean more than 50 mm per day. So, which causes surface ponding right? and even when a uh, subsurface drainage system has been installed. So, even if you have subsurface drainage system right, uh, when the areas with high intensity rainfall, so that may definitely uh, cause uh, surface ponding because uh, such a high intensity rainfall cannot be accommodated uh, in, in uh, uh, you know subsurface drainage system. So, so, so that for that conditions you may have to use surface uh, both surface as well as subsurface drainage systems. Okay. Uh, in both of the above examples, for example, here uh, one is uh, uh, cropping pattern and and uh, rainfall. Right. In both cases, the standing water could be removed by uh, subsurface drainage system. Right. But this would be either take too long or require drain spacing that are close to be economically unjustifiable. Okay. In both cases, both uh, uh, I mean uh, different cropping pattern you are planning. Right. And, and also in case of high uh, intensity rainfall right in both cases uh, i mean keeping this uh, subsurface drainage system definitely will help but the thing is this is not fast enough to drain the water uh, in in cases so you need to use both surface as subsurface drainage systems okay so uh, here this uh, picture can uh, really tell uh, how the both I mean combined drainage system can be used in case of different cropping patterns. For example, so this is a, a dry food crop, this is cotton and maize and similarly the rice. Okay. So, these, these and another plot has maize and the rice and cotton. So, here the rice uh, this is a wet spot right this is a wet spot and similarly this is a wet spot and others are dry spots, dry spots in the sense it requires you know uh, not standing water, it's, it does not require any standing water. So, if suppose see the water is too much, so water is too much in the sense uh, if you are planning uh, this and, uh, and, uh, and the high rainfall intensity is taking place. So, what happens for this uh, the dry, dry spots it is ok. So, the water can be you know uh, removed uh, by subsurface drainage system, but whereas the rice case, so it is already you know there is a standing water and the excess water cannot be you know uh, drained out and you may have to use a uh, surface drainage system here. Okay. So, the, this is what uh, the combined drainage system will be used during the different cropping pattern as well as the high rainfall intensity uh, cases. Okay, so, with this uh, in this uh, whole lecture so we were focusing on you know uh, the layouts basically and different types of uh, drainage system and their layouts. So, surface and subsurface drainage system uh, basically surface drainage system will be used to remove the ponding water which is uh, in you know uh, standing on the surface of uh, uh, the ground. Um, and using the uh, shallow ditches. Okay. So, whereas uh, subsurface drainage system, so their main goal is to remove excess water from the root zone as well as uh, the, the salts from the root zone. So, these two objectives uh, will be done by uh, sub subsurface drainage system. So, you can either use deep uh, ditches uh, or tiles or tile pipes, okay, pipe drainage system. 
So, in case of surface drainage system since uh, I mean uh, there is a layout different layouts are there. So, there are two layouts a random uh, drainage system as well as uh, a random field uh, ditch system or the parallel ditch system ok there is two ways. Uh, whereas, in subsurface drainage system, uh, so they have also random uh, drain sy drainage system and a parallel uh, drainage system right and the third one is herring bone drainage system. So, in the random drainage system you may also see uh, the parallel as well as uh, you know herring bone system for a particular uh, what you call the, the wet spot, wet spot you, you are, if the wet spot is that that means the depression is you know the wider or the big area. So, you may have to uh, use uh, either I mean either of the uh, I mean combination of different layouts like you can also use a random parallel and herring bone system in case of sub subsurface drainage system ok. So, in, in sometimes what happens you may have to use the, the combined drainage systems right. Uh, for example, the two cases the case number one is if you have a different uh, crops or grown in a particular area right. So, those uh, their water uh, requirements are different for example, paddy it requires standing water whereas, other crops like maize cotton. So, they may not be requiring you know standing water right. So, in that case what happens? So, if you have lots uh, you know what uh, rainfall which is happening in the short period of time. So, so I mean the and and the, the, the crops which are uh, aerated can be uh, can be ok if they have you know uh, subsurface drainage system right, but whereas uh, paddy crop is already water which is stagnant on surface the excess water can really cause the uh, water logging to the other fields also right other fields also you may require the surface drainage in this case. So, so both surface and subsurface drainage or systems can be planned some situations as I explained ok and thank you so much this is what.